In this video, I'm gonna be showing you Duet AI for Developers, which is Google's response to Microsoft's popular GitHub Copilot. So I'm gonna show you an example within VS Code, but there are a couple other editors that you can go ahead and set this up in if you're using something like JetBrains or if you're using cloud workstations. So the nice thing with this is it is free until February 1st. So if you're looking for something just to play around with, especially over the holidays, if you have a bit more time, this might be a good candidate for something like that. Now, once this trial is over, it is going to cost $90 per month per user with an upfront annual commitment. So about twice the cost as GitHub Copilot right now. And I'm just going to run through an example and you can sort of decide for yourself on whether it's worth the cost. So I'm just going to run through a simple example. So all I have is an index HTML in my VS code here. And the goal that I'm going to have is I want to have it create a UI for me as well as the logic where it will essentially take an input of a stock ticker. I want it to go ahead, create the endpoint that I'm going to use. So I'm going to ask it to find a free API to use. And then I want it to render a chart of the historical data. And I'll just run through some of the steps on how you can get started. So to get started within VS Code, if you just go within the extensions marketplace and search for either Duet AI or Google Cloud Code, you'll have to install the extension, enable the extension, authenticate with your Google Cloud account, and then you'll just have to make sure that you have the coding assistant turned on. So within the bottom right of your screen, if you have any errors, they'll show in the bottom right here where it says Duet AI, and you can also click that if all uh, lights are a go and you can turn it on and off from here as well. So a couple things with Duet AI. So just before I forget, the one thing that you can do is if you highlight the code and you right click, you do have a handful of things. So within this context, uh, some of these don't really apply, but you can say explain this uh, as you might sort of expect with integrating uh, a service like this with using an LLM, having a, a complex code base, having something where you can just click explain. That's a nice feature. You can uh, generate code from it and then you can also generate unit tests if you'd like. Now, the other nice thing with this is there is also something similar to GitHub Copilot chat where you have this interface here where you can go ahead and prompt questions about your code or just arbitrary things uh, from this interface as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just save out this file and I'm going to start my local server here for what we're going to be working in. So I'm going to make my code editor just a little larger here and I'll make this window just slightly smaller since mostly what we're going to be doing is within VS Code. So what I'm going to do here is what you can do is you can write a comment of your intention of the code that you'd like to have written. So I can say, I want an input that will take in a stock ticker. Then I want to use a free historical stock API that will render a chart after a user submits the form. So you can see right at the end there, it started to autocomplete even what I was asking for it to do. And then what you can do is if you just go ahead and make a new line here, you can click control and then enter and it will generate suggestions in line here. So right here we see that we have our H1, we have our form, it wants to make a canvas, so you can just start to tab through this. So here, what's interesting, so it says it wants to reference a chart.js file that's local. So if I wanted to scaffold this out, I could make that file and continue on in there. But just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna actually stop it here and say, I don't want that suggestion. And then I'm just going to go within here and then I'm going to further clarify my comment and I'm going to say, I want to do everything within this HTML file. Okay, so let's carry on here. So we see that it's opening up a script tag for us. And so you can see that you can either tab uh, one line at a time or section by section, or at any point you can just go ahead and click Control Enter. So I'm gonna go click Control Enter. 
I'm going to see that it's generated an awful lot of code for me. So we see that it's uh, setting up the variables that I need for the different DOM elements. It's adding the event listener to submission on the form. It's actually going ahead and looking to make a request to chart. Now, what I'm going to further say here is I'm going to, let's go and clarify this even further. Let's say I want to use free alpha vantage. So alpha vantage is a really easy API to get started with. It's free. You don't even need to make an account or log in rather. You just have to put in your email and they'll give you an API key and you can query it and play around with this example if you like. So let's see what it can do from here. So here, this is a little bit closer to what I was sort of hoping for. So we have our alpha vantage endpoint. We have the time series daily, which I assume is the historical data. And we see that it's doing a little normalization of the data. And then it's doing some work to actually create the chart. So to get the API key, so you see your API key here. So we'll have to just get an API key from Alpha Vantage, and all you have to do is you just have to put in your organization and email, and then you'll have the API key that you can grab right in line here. So I have mine just in another screen here. I'm just going to go ahead and paste it over here. And then I'm just going to move this up. And then let's just save this out. So let's just try this with our terminal or console rather open. And I'm going to put in the Apple ticker and submit it. And there we go. So right there, with just a little bit of finessing, we have a working stock example. So obviously, it's very ugly. So you could go in and you could say, I want to use Tailwind CSS for styling. And let's just test this out. So if I get rid of this whole form, and the H1. So it didn't quite do it there, but let's try and control enter. So again, it isn't quite generating the form. So let's say I want to use Tailwind CSS for styling. I want to have my input and button use the Tailwind classes. So again, it didn't quite do it in, in, in the example that I used prior. It actually did this pretty well. But if I just go ahead here and if I just say, let's highlight it, let's test a different approach. Let's highlight this and let's say generate code. So it didn't give me any suggestions, but let's say I paste that in within the chat window here. So here it's saying I could either install Tailwind CSS or use the class here. So let's just copy over the CDN. And then within here, okay, so it has a little bit of something. Uh, I'll hand it to that, but it's not really visually appealing. Let's say, let's make this more modern. So I'll go in here, I'll find the portion that I want to use. So we have, now we have a main and a header. So some good HTML practices here. And if I just go ahead and replace that section and save it out, there we go. So now we have something that looks a little bit more reasonable. And if I just go ahead again, say AAPL, submit, there's our stock chart. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to give you a quick look at Duet AI. I really encourage you to check it out, especially if you're watching this video and it's still within the free trial period. It's a really neat tool just to play around with. You saw in this example, you can sort of get some interesting results. It's really nice that it's integrated right within your code editor. So the difference with something like ChatGPT, you might be uh, copy and pasting things back and forth, whereas this, it's just integrated right within. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and otherwise, until the next one.